United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I will call this July 18, 2023, County Council meeting to order. Um, all of my council colleagues are present, as well as Christina, the auditor. Uh, first on the agenda, department updates um, for the Sheriff's Department. We welcome Larry Jolly. Thank you for having me. Good seeing all of you. I think that's the first time I've been to this this year. Guys. Well, so, nice to see you. I'll be quick because I know you guys have had a long day. Thank you. Um, the sheriff emailed the monthly reports to all of you, uh, which was the flash report, the biannual commissary report. Um, <coughs> when he printed this for me, we've had four fatalities this year. Um, that went up to five uh, last Friday. Um, we are over our total um, 2022, and I don't know how many we had in 2022. I didn't research that before I came today. So, um, speed, drugs, alcohol are all factors with unrestrained motorists contributing as well. Um, had a couple uh, more vendor forms that need to be completed uh, for the federal inmates. Jody got with Kathy Adamson last week. Those have been completed and submitted. A budget was submitted on July 3rd. An outline was submitted by the sheriff detailing all the accounts. He said if you have any questions, to reach out to him before you can see at the next meeting. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, chemical addiction program is in week two. Everything is going good. Um, <coughs> they're waiting on ordinance from the auditor so that we can get uh, donations from the public. Uh, we are holding 10 uh, inmates for Wabash, two for the Indiana Department of Corrections, and two for other counties. When I left at two, uh, our population was 65. That's all I have. Any questions or comments, board members? <coughs> Larry. Thank you much. Thank you. Good seeing you. See, good seeing you too. Don't trip. <laughs> <laughs> it got me last night. <coughs> Kathy, anything or just observing? Observing. Rick, anything or observing? Just observing. John Geyer, Highway. You just skipped over John. <laughs> I skipped, no I didn't. So we'll get him on the next pass. <laughs> I think he feels left out. Good evening. Good evening. I don't have a whole lot. Um, bring you up to date. Uh, the guys have been patching holes, changing culverts. <coughs> um, I think I told you we got the brush cutter. They're they're operating it. Uh, they're, of course, they're mowing roadsides. Uh, we've been laying hub. Um, they're covering up the milling roads. Um, they are going to start chip sealing tomorrow. Got a little foil ordered, so they're going to be doing that. Um, I'm going to give you an update on Bridge 50 out here with the Tippecanoe River. Uh, AT&T, we've been waiting on them to get the fiber optic line moved. They got it done. Uh, LaPorte Construction, they're going to start on it. I don't have a start date, but they'll start construction on it anytime soon. So uh, that'll be getting closed and that work will be getting started in the near future here. Um, we had the power broom ordered. It got delivered about four o'clock this afternoon, so we got it. They just got the dogs and trailer and rolled them away. So that just got delivered. Um, appropriations, I think tonight you'll see uh, the two for bridges 32 and 50 that were uh, in the MPH. Uh, we've been wanting to switch them over to Hume Bridge. Uh, you'll see them come through, moving them back and forth. Uh, Cancel those funds out of the MBH and put them over in the same bridge. We've talked about that before. And then um, you'll see an appropriation uh, coming out of uh, 1176 um, into um, my tune list uh, for 700000 And that is for your community crossings. and. Uh, Chip and seal. So 666,000 of that is for your community crossing matches. So you can 
got two years of matches, and that's why I got so much. Yeah, each year is 333000 So one of those matches is for last year's award. That's 333 And then one of them is this year's award. And that's wheel tax, or tax. Mm -hmm. money that we match with. So that's why that amounts so much. So you'll see that come through. And then we're taking a little bit of that uh, for chip and seal. So we can see that. Is there any questions on that? Yes, sir. About that bridge 50, is that a 60, 90, 120 day once they get started? I think it's a, I think it's 180, I think. So no I other dependent. Yeah, they're supposed to be done by November. Okay. They're, they're just closing one lane at a time and they're closing they're the closing whole bridge. That way they can get a better. <coughs> the good thing is a new 31 is only a mile away. So. Yeah, yeah, it's not the worst. <coughs> uh, so if you don't have any questions on that, I had one more thing I want to bring up. And that was, I was going to, uh, so on old 31 South, I'm not going to bring this up for you guys to vote on tonight, but Old 31 South Federal Aid Project, we, uh, that one's going to let next year, and we've over budgeted on that. And we've got it calculated, uh, we're going to be $300,000 over on that. And I need more money for chip and seal this year. I was going to ask you if we could take 300000 of that out and bring it over into bituminous for chip seal. Because you'll have enough left in, in the old bill that we set aside. You'll have enough. We'll have enough set aside for that okay. project. We've over budgeted. Okay. So we've saved more than what we need. Okay. So, so this is just information sharing and asking our asking, thoughts and asking maybe not blessing because. <coughs> well, well, is it worth bringing an appropriation to us? Well, that's what your appropriation will be a transfer request next. A month. transfer request next month. Gotcha. Uh, Thank this, you for that clarity. Is this from our this is from contribution? This is from, from money that I have set aside, budgeted each year for the last five years and put aside into that. And then I'm asking to transfer that back. I've used MBH funds, mm -hmm. saved it back, and I'm going to ask to put that, transfer it over into by doing this. But that won't affect the federal aid itself. <clears throat> just moving it from one pot to the other so we can use it instead of letting it sit there and look pretty. And, and you're going to use it for what? Chip seal. And so then if we if then if we say, sure, that's a good idea, then there'll be a transfer next, transfer next month. And then yeah. that money will be available. So you'll have plenty of summer, plenty of time to utilize it yes. and do with it what you want. Yes. Is that a correct statement? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if nobody's seen a problem with it, I'll go ahead and hand this transfer request over to Christina tonight. So she so can advertise it for next month. For next month. Um, comments, but I have no issue. I think that's a champion idea. Board members, any? No, you don't. No, we're not. Tonight. He's just bring. He just should information share. It. I think that's champion idea. Okay. So we get the ball rolling for next month. <coughs> mm -hmm. Paperwork <coughs> for next month. Actually, this, it's just a transfer doesn't have to be advertised. You could take that down if you wanted. A transfer doesn't have to be advertised? Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought it did. Uh -huh. okay. Do you want us to. Oh, so can you approve it then? Or? You can vote on it tonight if you want. Oh, I didn't know Nobody that. Nobody the other transfer. You it has to, to do that. It'll, It'll do have that. to go before the commissioner, so on next month. It will, yeah. Okay. We can go ahead and vote on it then. Then you can get it quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Me too. I thought everything had only appropriations, I guess, had to be advertised. Okay. Now we know. Yep. Stop it. Anything else? That's all I have. Board members, any other questions, comments for John? No. Thank you much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jerry. <coughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Good to see everybody. Nice seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. 
to be here. Nice to be seen, like some people say. <laughs> okay, um, I want to give you a little bit of a report uh, on our coroner's office and activities and things like that. Um, effective today, we've had uh, 110 uh, residents at Fulton, well, they aren't residents, maybe, but people have passed away in Fulton County so far this year. Of that, uh, 37 of those families, our coroner's office has served. Um, which equates into 34%. Uh, so we're right there where we've been the last several years between 31 and 34%. So uh, we've had actually uh, 23 uh, males and 14 females. Um, this time last year, we actually had served 39 families. Um, of those types of death, the types or uh, qualifications, we have one that was undetermined, 30 that are natural, and six are accidental or accident. Um, we've had five autopsies so far this year. One was actually carry carried over from 2022 because it happened um, at the very end of the year, uh, like New Year's Eve. So anyway, uh, we have 10 labs that we've had performed out at Woodlawn. And then we've also had uh, toxicology, which that's sent down to access toxicology. Uh, we've actually done eight tox draws, and then that always accompanies an autopsy. So we've had a total of 13 for the year. Uh, grant season is wide open. It's starting up, and it's exciting. Indiana State Department of Health has just unveiled their uh, possibilities for us to write grants and I'm hoping that those will be submitted yet this week. If not, it'll be the first of next week uh, to get those completed. We also have a hemp grant, which is relative to the funds assisting with our 2023 tabletop exercise. And what that is, it's through the Local Emergency Planning Committee. Uh, it's a collaborative group of professionals from all over the county. Uh, many tier two people, first responders. Uh, some of you are on that committee too because we have to have a diverse selection uh, for that. And that also, by doing these tabletops and preparations and things, it helps us to attain other grants, bringing more money back into the county. So that's why that's important. But this uh, HEMF grant uh, is something unique and different than I've ever tried before. Uh, we're actually, uh, it's a collaborative effort with uh, maybe three of us or four that will be working on that. And hopefully we're going to get together with somebody from the state. Um, I've kind of been, if you will, uh, trying to get the attention of one of the men from Indiana Department of Homeland Security. And so he said that if he would send somebody up, but the last time we saw him, which was last week at the EMS meeting, um, he said, well, could we go down there? So I guess we may pile into a car and go down <laughs> and visit um, the person who will help us to get into the portals and navigate those waters that we're not so certain of. Um, just to let you know, like what the tabletop exercise is, back in 2022, uh, we partnered with Sunoco Products of Akron and kind of just a brief scenario, uh, one of their big tra tanker trucks rolled over on the 19 and a bunch of their hot glue, you know, ran down the road. It was heading toward, you know, some of the creek and some things like that. So we have a scenario. It gives us all a chance to practice in the event that something like that would occur. So we try to select places from all over the county um, to make it of interest to everybody. So this next year we are uh, partnering with Siri Solutions. I can't really tell you what it's going to be because it's kind of a secret, but uh, it'll take place out in Lighters Ford, Abinabi Township. So the Abinabi <coughs> Fire Department and Siri Solution are our hosts for that event. Um, so that's a little bit about that. Uh, and when we have those local emergency planning committee meetings, attendance is very important. Our collaboration and participation by everybody, because that does help with the positivity of our grant outcomes. So it's very important. Uh, coming up on August 9th, we've got Lunch and Learn uh, with the Tier 2 partners. What the Tier 2 partners are, 
are different companies and entities that have uh, hazardous materials that we might be subjected to or in contact with. So we're going to get to know them better. They, we hope that they will get to know us better um, there on August 9th. Uh, that's going to be held at the fairgrounds, and uh, the Farm Bureau is going to be one of our sponsors to help us a little bit with lunch and learning. So I wanted to let you know that. Uh, another thing relative to the coroner's office, our forensic van is now up to 100% again. We don't have to worry about um, it being dead when we arrive to go, you know, on a call. Um, everything was fine, though, because I took my own vehicle um, one time that we had to do that. Another time, uh, our vehicle was getting serviced up in Middlebury to get our retrofitting done so this doesn't happen. And again, I just went ahead and took my own little van and everything worked out perfect. So it's back, it's smiling, it's shiny, and it's ready for the Baltimore Bulldog Parade. That's our next place, or we're going to look forward to that. So anyway, I uh, wanted to also let you know about this. Um, this is also with the Indiana Farm Bureau, and you know, back in uh, February, I talked to you, all of you about, you know, our hearts, the cardiovascular system, and things like that. And I feel like that's one of my jobs to keep everybody healthy if I can, to like drop hints so you can be aware of things. So um, I got this in the mail yesterday, uh, Lifeline screening, and I know some of you might be interested in this. I will tell you it has uh, multiple different types of testing, like carotid arteries. They do that with the ultrasound. That's your arteries right here in the neck to check to see, make sure they're not clogged up. Uh, they also can do uh, heart rhythm screening, so that's for atrial fibrillation. That's something that's kind of, we've got that in our family, and I'm lucky I don't have that yet. But uh, I want to keep on top of it, um, the aortic aneurysm screening, and that's of the abdomen. That's a great big artery that shoots off the top of the heart, comes all the way down, supplies the blood to the legs. Sometimes those can develop soft spots or have a bulge in it. They've got a method that they can detect that. And I will tell you, uh, two of our cases about a month ago were aortic aneurysms where they actually blew. So one was a man and one was a lady. And it was very unexpected. I mean, you don't really have any symptoms with that. The lady thought she was having a heart attack, but um, there's no test like a hospital that can detect that. I mean, as far as like the troponin, which is the cardiac enzyme. So um, if you can be proactive like this, they're also doing osteoporosis screening. So that's important, the bone density. So I wanted to let you know that that's coming up on uh, August 10th at Whippoorwill Church. If anybody would like the number, you can call up and this is something you don't need an appointment with the doctor. Um, the alternatives would be if you wanted to go to a, your doctor and ask for these, then they would be paid for by your insurance. But like for these five screenings, and then, well, it'd be six screenings, no, five. That includes the osteoporosis, it's like $145, which is not bad when you can figure all the data and information you're gonna get. They will tell you that day if, you're, uh, you know, if your levels are too high or a question, they'll let you know immediately. Otherwise, your results come back in about 10 days. And there's a portal you can get. The other thing is that I will tell you, they do not test for coronary arteries. Those are the arteries that supply the heart with um, oxygen, food, everything that your heart needs to keep beating. Uh, so they do not do that. So that would be something you could either have done with your doctor's assistance or if you want to just do it yourself. I can let you, the only place I'm aware of that does that is St. Vincent's and there is a St. Vincent Hospital in Kokomo that's conveniently located. And that test is about $49. So, but you can't use your insurance on that, but it's very cost effective. So just want to keep you guys safe. So I'm going to let you know about that. And my last thing is uh, that I just wanted to let you know our coroner's office has grown exponentially. Um, we've gone up about 300% within a 10 year time period for our uh, families that we've served. Like back in 2010, if you want to compare that to 2020, uh, we had 24 
um, families we served in 2010, but we had 78 in 2020. So that's a lot, that's about 340%. 2011 again, so I think it's not just a short-term trend. I feel like it's trending and that's kind of the way um, we're on our way this year again. We've had uh, 37 families we've served and if you look back at 2013, we only had 26 the whole year. So um, we're here to help in any way we can to keep people safe and we love our community. So anyway, that's I think all I have for the moment. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Jerry? Board members. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Yes. We appreciate your information. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Bye. So, so you want me to ask John Flynn if he's got anything to say? Is that yours? Any, any comment? Anything you want to say? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Ladd, Fedco. Anything you want to say? Uh, oh, I have Oh, trust me, he, he's got a lot to talk about. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'll start with the housing study um, first. Sometime in August, we're going to have a housing symposium, and that's going to be community wide. We'll be bringing everybody in, and it's where we're going to talk about what the study has produced so far. Um, get some opinions. Um, I try to send everybody a link. I don't know if you guys got it or not. If you didn't let me know, I'll get it back to you. Um, there's about 150 pages worth of information, just general stuff for you to look at. Um, so just keep an eye on the paper or, of course, in the next meeting when we finally do set the dates, I'll let you all know what the dates are and everything like that. Um, second thing I did was I held a, conducted an economic development seminar a couple of weeks ago with, uh, on the 7th with a gentleman named Lee Llewellyn, who's head of IADA, which is the state's, my association's um, economic development organization at state level. And he came in um, and talked about trends in economic development. Um, I could only invite, because of open door laws, I could only invite certain numbers of people and things. Um, but if you're interested in it, go to Channel 4, type in FEDCO, and it'll pop up. Uh, I will recommend a pair of earphones because um, the sound isn't all the way there all the time, so but you can get through to it. Um, then the last thing, I think, well, Randy attended his first meeting, and it was really a good meeting. I'm glad he was there. Had uh, some things to contribute, whatnot. I don't know if Randy wants to say something later, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to a request I have. Uh, a couple months ago, I told you that uh, Black Tour was getting ready to be completed and um, should be done by the end of the year. And then it came up in the new contract as well as in the old one. Um, we're obligated. FECO is obligated to give NEPSCO a contribution in aid construction for the installations that are going to go out there, which means the gas, to the tune of 66650 I'm sorry, $66,685.85. So what I'm going to ask for, because we don't have the money, is to split it between the county and the city. So I'm asking you for $33,000. $332.93. $33,342.93. This is a contract that's it's got a 90-day um, run on it, which means we have until uh, September 27th of this year to make some decisions. I'm obviously not asking you tonight to do that, to make a decision or anything. Um, but it's the quicker that we can get this done, the quicker we can get this thing started and running, up and running. What well, what all exactly is it for? So I'm sorry. What all did you say this was for? It's the, it's actually just it's a good fit down payment <coughs> that we're going to finish this thing. I mean, what all are you talking finishing? Gas lines, everything. Everything. It's going to be done. So yeah, the asphalt, the whole everything. Uh, REMC is holding. I think it's a two. 
$183,000 grant for everything else. And um, once it's done, Steve, it'll be, you'll be able to sell it. Right. Be able to do the whole thing. Not done yet or what all. Right, yeah. Finish up. No, it's, it's, a, it's a good, honest question because you don't know what, what's what, you know. But yeah, this thing will be to get it completely finished. So that's information I'll ask or any questions you guys might have on that one or anything else. So you're going to ask the city to contribute? Yep, I'm sorry. Back. Is that, I'm going is to the city correct? next. But you haven't appeared before the city yet? Not yet. Okay. okay. It's only, it's, it's because of the timing issue. Right, right, right. Any questions, board members, regarding this request of that's, the funding? That's for the gas line for NIPSCO mm -hmm. to run it down the surface. All the way around. Um, That's that's everything, and then the grant with our agency will do the asphalting. Um, you know where the road kind of stops being good and gets into gravel and everything. They're going to start right there, go all the way around, do the um, the parking lots areas in front of the buildings, the whole thing. Um, there's been a request um, to. Um, Go ahead and put native grasses in out there, fix it up, and make it look really, really nice. And um, so we're working with um, people to, to get that going too. So once it gets done, it should look pretty good. And then you get your money back. That's the, that's the other most important part. You get your money back through the tap in fees. And the way that that would work was just tap and fee gets, somebody comes in, tap and fee gets paid. I'll split it between you and the city. And then um, move on from there. Do you know what that fee is going to be? I have no idea yet. I've got a feeling fee that's going to be kind of a whole thing. I would too. Will that be that funds? Yeah. 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 There's the balance. Okay. I've already looked it up. Other questions, comments regarding this request? Or yeah. half, the, half the cost of the NIPSCO gas line, which is $33,340. Yeah. And if you want to fill the total is 66. Six eight five eighty five. Okay. <coughs> what would happen if we agree to pay our half and the city doesn't, or vice versa? Where's the other half of the money? To be honest with you, I don't know, too, but I'll be completely honest. This other, this other way too, it probably kills the whole thing. Yeah. And then you've just got all your investments sitting out there doing nothing. And you've got two buildings without gas. Without gas. Although uh, Dan Holtz is going to put a uh, put into uh, propane tanks. So if he does that, will he still tie in with the NIPCO if it's available? I don't think so. So we'll get down. We, I don't feet. know that. I'm, I'm saying that right now. Right. It depends on how fast things get moved. Right. It, it depends it, on the cost, too. No, it says two years later when propane's double, he will change his mind. <laughs> I mean, no, you're right. Yeah. So it's just, it's just going to be. In Dan's case, it's going to be a toss-up. Natural gas is expensive to right. start, but once you get it, it's not. Yeah. It's very economical. Well, nothing's cheap, but it's one of the cheapest forms of heat you can have. I think Dan has moved more out of uh, restriction. Yeah, true. Sure. You know, he's been in the office. We haven't known him for a few years. And, um, I think if we got this thing going, maybe you know, we'll go in the other direction. He can't even really move in there yet, right? Not really. He doesn't have electricity yet, does he? Yeah. They're put, last time I was out, they were putting the electricity up, but they no hook up, so they don't have to And he's got very interesting problems at the high of the so he can change slides. Yeah, I heard it pretty big. 
So, so board members, do um, do we want to ask more questions? Do we want to table this request until our August council meeting? Do we want to discuss approving and moving forward on this tonight? I, if we decide to do this, um, I think the funding should come from our edit economic development fund and we have more than enough money in that fund to cover 34,000, 33,344. Talk to me. Uh, we can do it good faith and get the ball rolling and maybe the city will follow along. I, I kind of do too. I think we need to kind of short side on our part not to finish the project. Yeah, I've done the, do the it's way a, it's a situation where you don't have a lot of choice. Yeah. There's already lots of money invested, and if right. it's not finished, it's dead. True. And, and 34000 in the scope of everything is nothing. Still 34000 But well, I mean, I'm, I'm not diminishing that. But. Yeah, I know what you're I mean, you hate to let thirty-four thousand dollars go a pretty substantial deal. That's true. Hopefully, in a few years, it's full. So it's a change of motion. Okay, it does need a motion. So uh, Ron's going to make a motion that and that we do um, give the. Thirty-three thousand three hundred and forty-four dollars. Forty-two. Forty-two. Thank you. Well, it's forty-three cents. <laughs> so we we round it. We don't do pennies. <laughs> That's okay. Lori seconded, and this is going to come out of edit, our edit fund. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries seven zero. Thank you. You can. Okay. You're welcome. Was there anything else? No. You got money and now you're sitting down? Yeah. Okay, I see how that goes. I know when to shut up. <laughs> okay. So we've covered, all right. Next <coughs> on our agenda um, are the minutes from our June 20th County Council meeting. Has everybody had an opportunity to <coughs> review the minutes from our last meeting? Yes. Yes. And if so, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Randy moved to approve. Is there a second? Steve seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7-0. Um, I am passing the minutes. If you will sign and keep passing down to Pete, please. Thank you. Next, uh, transfers. <coughs> and we now have two. And we don't sign this. We just approve. The first one is um, from the Soil and Water Conservation District. Transferring $3,180 from building rent to office supply. And the explanation is, uh, will not be utilizing the building rent account this year and need to reimburse soil and water for office supplies. <clears throat> Any questions? Is there a motion? Pete moved to approve. Is there a second? Randy seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7-0. And the second transfer request is the one um, that John Geyer for the Highway Department spoke to us about in his presentation. Um, this is three, taking 300,000 from old U.S. Repa uh, re repaving, project. repaving project, thank you, and putting it um, bituminous. Transfer of over budgeted funds from federal aid grant match account to bituminous to put toward chip and seal projects. Steve moved to approve. 
Ron seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7-0. <coughs> that is the transfer request. Next, additional appropriations. Okay. Boom, bridge. Hang on, guys. The first is um, the highway department. From 1135 Coombe Bridge, appropriating to 1135 Coombe Bridge, that was budgeted in MVH, more cash was Reserved from 2022's budget, allowing 1135 Coombe Bridge to pay for 2023 bridge projects. Uh, this is a total amount of uh, Bridge 32, $258,001. Bridge 50, $269,771. For a total of $527,722. Any discussion? If not, is there a motion to approve? Seven, seven, Did I say 22? My, yeah, my seven, apologies. Seven, seven, 772. My apologies. Pete moved to approve. Is there a second? I second. Lori. Lori seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. I am signing and passing for your signature. And the next one is, the next one is, where is it? Oh, here it is. Is this? So this is for all of the 1176 MVH. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. 1176. Um. So reducing from 1176 MBH budget in order to appropriate the balance from 1135, 527,772 and um, 700,000 for bituminous <coughs> placement of monies into account for chip and seal program and to cover the community uh, crossing matching funds that John spoke to us about. Any discussion? Is there a motion to approve? Steve moved to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Lori seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right <coughs> hand. Motion carries 7 0. Passing. <coughs> is um, communications for the jail construction fund contract services uh, $3,474.90 and contract services <coughs> excuse me $10,976.90 for a total of $14,451.80 uh, Scheffler Construction, final waivers per contract with Pyramid, and finishing electrical work at the tower site. And this was for communications, and Pete will abstain. Is there a motion to approve? 
Ron moved to approve, Steve seconded. All in favor signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 6-0, Pete abstaining. I'm signing and passing. And the last appropriation request is um, commissioners from the coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds, $500,000 for the Apache Drive project um, along for the Apache Drive project. Any questions? If not, is there a motion to approve? I mean, this is the part that got demolished. Say it again. Hmm. No, this different. And Apache is different. And the sidewalk of down 14 is what got combined. That's still an right. evacuation problem. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> if not, is there a motion to approve? Pete moved to approve. Is there a second? Randy seconded. All in favor signify by raising right hand. Motion carries 7-0. Okay. Now we're to old business. Pete, old you, business? Yeah, one thing. Um, okay. At our last council meeting, there was an appropriation for the health department. And the what it was was vague and I didn't understand it. So I voted no. And want to go on record as saying that I'm not against immunization clinics and had I understood what it was, I would have approved it. it. My vote didn't change the outcome, but I just, I made an error of not understanding, so I didn't vote for something that I was confused about, and as it turned out, it was pretty simple, and I would have voted yes had I understood. <coughs> Thank I you. For, Thank you for that. Thank you. Randy, old business? No. So, so your first Bedco meeting was um, an enjoyable experience and informative experience and eye-opening experience, and you're going to enjoy being a valuable participant to the Bedco board. I would elaborate just a little bit on that, uh, okay. briefly. Uh, Went to the first meeting the other day, was very impressed with the, the, comp, the members. Uh, they greeted me and made me feel very welcome. And they've got some good things on the plate coming down the road. Uh, already learned quite a bit uh, that I didn't know. And uh, I've probably been one of their biggest critics in the past, but mainly because I didn't know what, what they were doing. So I'm looking forward to working with them and improving Polk Town. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Chase, old business? No, ma'am. Lori, old business? No, ma'am. Steve? Ron? I have none. Christina? No. Old business, anyone? New business? Pete? No, ma'am. Randy, new business? No. Chase? No, ma'am. Lori, new business. Steve? No. Ron? Yes. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, Phil and I went to a state cult conference down in Carmel, and we went down specifically for one of the breakout sessions was ambulance and EMS, how to pay for it. And I don't think it was that. We found out we're not the only county that has that issue and we're talking large counties from Allen County and the city of Fort Wayne was there and also Steuben County was another one our size um, but some of the information was was good um, some of it I don't think more of a complaint session than it was anything else but while we were there we did corner Jason Simler who is in the process with Baker Tilly of doing our five-year plan. And we sat through uh, West Bennett, the DLGF head at the time, 
on the upcoming reassessments and the different changes in the taxing that the state come out with and we cornered Jason about did he put that in our five-year plan because if he was going on a five-year plan before the legislature and then he comes in with the differences that are coming down the pike that would really change the ball game and fortunately he said yes he had the numbers involved and so he said he's real close to having it finished and, but he did use the new um, assessments and property tax guidelines that the state came up with this year so that was informative that's it so so we shall see we when, shall he, when he presents the updated five-year plan how that's reflected yes oh boy <coughs> yes thank you i have no new business new business christina new business anyone if there's nothing else i will ask for a motion to adjourn is there a motion so case moved to adjourn is there a second randy seconded all in favor signify raising your right hand motion carries thank you